Hello everybody, it's Bacon Donut here, back with another Sky Factory tutorial. Yes! So, Sky Factory is a mod pack that I created, and if you want to know more about it and how to get it, go back and watch episode one. Today, we're going to make another step in our progress toward tech. That's right, machines, power, all sorts of stuff like that. We've recently finished up our Darkcraft tutorial, so... By now, if you've done all the stuff in there, you should be able to fly, which lets you start making some cooler builds than before. So let's take a, a look at our achievement uh, book here. There are several things in here that are going to take a lot of technology. Transmitting power wirelessly, power from three different fuels, pink from power, automating a farm with a harvester and planter. All this stuff is, is technology, and you're going to need a good large supply of power in order to do that. So I'm going to show you how to make the first step uh, toward that. Well, not the first step. This was the first step. This is the basic concept. Yeah, you can see I've moved the, the, the chest here because it, it was making cobblestone for us and uh, it was kind of loud. So this in an earlier video is an automatic lava generator using these crucibles. That was a previous uh, achievement that we completed and that's creating lava power for this generator here so we're going to take that notion and supersize it and do it on a larger scale so that we'll have the fuel supply to make a lot more power to be able to do some of the cooler things that we're going to do later and in the process we're also going to complete one of these achievements and that is creating a pigman based gold farm so all of this stuff we're going to do in the nether so the th one thing you need to know about crucibles is that they're kind of laggy. If you do crucibles on a large scale, it's going to end up lagging your game. So I highly recommend that if you're going to go with that for power, if you're going to do it on a large scale, that you do it somewhere away from your base or in another dimension such as the nether. And so that's what I've done here. So let's head over here and I will show you what I've made. So this you can see I've, I've made some improvements to our nether setup here so this was just a platform with a fence uh that allowed pigment to spawn so we have stepped this up a notch tremendously so the basic concept here is that the floor is made out of half slab so nothing can spawn here and there's elevator blocks here that take us up to the top floor and i'm going to explain all this in a minute but uh, things can actually spawn on elevator blocks, and torches don't stop nether stuff from spawning. Uh, and you have to be very careful with a setup like this because it's not just pigmen you have to worry about. I've made the roof small enough so that ghasts can't spawn in here, but there are creeper, there's nitro creepers that spawn, and there's also a bat that explodes. So you have to be very careful, and you don't want those spawning in here. So putting these fence gates down allows me to still use the elevator without having to worry about something spawning on top of there. So that's why that's there. And so at its core, the principle here is exactly the same as the mob farm that we made in the overworld. If you remember, the overworld mob farm is just a dark box for stuff to spawn in, right? And in in the sides we we put fans to blow things into the middle they land on these iron spikes and uh get automatically killed and a vacuum hopper right up here deposits the loot in the chest right so and when you're 20 ish blocks away they'll spawn in there and get automatically killed that's the same exact thing that i'm doing in here it's just in the nether so this is half slab so stuff can't spawn here over there is not half slabs, so they can spawn. And I've made this thing roughly 20 blocks long, so if I'm standing on one side of it, things are going to be spawning back over there. And you can see that we've got a variety of spawns in here. We've got the heat, car, heat scar spiders, pigments of various types, and you will also get... In, right now we don't have any by random chance, uh, but there's also heat scar spiders. There's also uh, those... those flame bat things, and also wisps from Thomcraft if you have Thomcraft installed. Now, some other important points here. 
this is a fence and the reason I, or a wall a cobblestone wall and the reason i'm doing that is that there's technically only half a block of space right there and that keeps the baby heat scar spiders from fitting through that that gap these spiders are bad news they have a ton of health when you kill a, a mother one the babies will often split off of it and uh if if you don't set this up right they'll hop right over the fence and come and eat your face and this one's still almost spawned in range. So, so, see, he can't get in there. So that's what we want. And we've also got these uh, vacuum hoppers set up here uh, to, to deposit loot in the chests. Um, yeah. So let's, let's kill some of these. So if you smack them, they all aggro, and they're running onto the, uh, the spikes. And the fans are helping in the back, too, to push them forward so you can get them in range. And as you can see in the crystal chests here, they're dropping loot. And uh, they drop a variety of things, but also gold. Ah, there's one of those bats. Yeah, those things will explode. You need to be careful of those. Um, so they drop both ingots and um, gold nuggets, which uh, means that technically this is a pigment-based gold farm, and we've completed that requirement. And you also get... Uh, drops like like that string that just happened this flame string which is useful in making a good uh, tinker's construct bow and yeah the babies when you kill the mothers they can spawn on this side of the fence so be careful you were this is a more dangerous farm uh in this design it's possible to do it safer but you know it's it's more complicated to do it that way all right so i'm going to explain what's going on with all these levers so let's go upstairs so here we have a ton of crucibles. Crucibles adorn the entire length of both walls. And here I have a, a custom cobblestone generator. And uh, let me, here, let's, let's get out the outside here to take a look at this, the design. All right, so I've got liquid force in the back and lava on the sides and you might not have thought to do it this way but basically it doesn't matter which sides of that piece of cobblestone the liquid and the lava is on it's going to count as long as it's on one of two sides it's going to count in terms of the transfer node picking up the cobble um, and so the way that i've designed this we're able to use um two sides we could use another side if I went underneath, but I just didn't bother. Uh, so we can use two sides of this cobble. It can be side by side, and it th it has a, the benefit of being symmetrical because the center is two blocks wide of this room. And uh, so it's, it's a symmetrical design, which, you know, not everybody cares about, but it was bothering me to have it just the other way. And uh, I'm using liquid force here because water doesn't work in the nether, but liquid force also activates the transfer nodes and works just fine. And as you can see, the roof of both the side spawn areas and up here is all covered with half slabs to keep the monsters from spawning. And here, let's uh, cover this back up like so and like that and like that there we go all fixed and you can see those wisps going around out there so we got the transfer node we've got a uh, mining upgrade so it pulls a stack at a time and uh it comes along the the pipe here it deposits the cobble into these and uh it gets melted down and this liquid pipe this it's called fluid duct We've covered this in a previous episode. It needs a redstone signal, and that's why there's levers underneath. This is a block that's touching the underside of the fluid duct, and the lever is to give it a redstone signal. And we've wrenched it. We've hit it with our wrench to pull it outward. So that makes the lava travel all the way down here into that tank that's below. And these guys, this is a new tank called an ender tank. And uh, that is something you can use to, to move liquids in between dimensions, which is going to be very important for completing this thing. Uh, and the other thing to note is 
that I'm using netherrack here. It's netherrack that's on fire like that because that gives you a faster speed. Later in the game, there is an even faster way to power it, but uh, we haven't done the, the, the base tech yet to be able to make that. Um, so, so that's essential. Oh, there's one of those nitro creepers. Do not let one of those blow up in here. That is bad news. So let's go back to the overworld. That, uh, that sums up everything we've done here. Now, the one thing that we're missing is a chunk loader. But let's go ahead and complete our, uh, right here. Com uh, create a pigment-based gold farm. Yes! Complete achievement get. Um, the, the one piece that we're missing is a chunk loader because right now, if we're not there, we're not in the nether, the game doesn't have that loaded. Nothing is happening. It, that, it's just frozen in place if we're not there. It has to be loaded up. And so we need a device called a chunk loader to keep it loaded up while we're not there. And uh, I've got one on my hot bar here, but I wanted to just show you the recipe. Chunk loader, boom. So an ender pearl, an enchantment table, and some gold. So that's all materials that you should have readily available. Uh, assuming that you've gotten, oh, I forgot to fly. Yeah, I'm in survival, let's get back up here. Okay. Um, Assuming you've got a good farm and a source of leather, you should be able to uh, to get an enchantment table just fine. And uh, from there, it's a short step over to a chunk loader. So let's go make one. Or, well, we already have one. Let's go put it down. I'll show you how to use it. Back over to the nether. And it doesn't really matter where you put it. Uh, I'm just going to set it just off to the side here. Now... You need to pay attention to the area that it's um, that it's affecting. What what range it's loading up. So we're gonna hit show lasers here, and it puts up these this laser grid that's, I mean, kind of a it's actually a square, but it's it's rotating in a circle in a circular fashion here, uh, showing you the outside edge of the area that it's loading up. And as you can see, that bar comes right along here right along here, which means that it is not covering the entire thing. So I'm standing just outside the, the range of it. Now in Minecraft, chunks are a 16 by 16 area that goes from uh, void all the way up to build height. And you can see that in Sky Factory by hitting F9 on your keyboard. Uh, that put up vertical red bars that show the corners of the chunks and if you hit f9 a second time you get a grid um it, this will make more sense if i get out and fly and fly around a little bit so let's uh get out here okay so see the here, let's get outside of the chunk loader see the square see how it's a square grid does that make sense so each one of these square grids from void all the way up to build height is a chunk and the game just kind of that's kind of a behind the scenes minecraft thing about how the game works and thinks and uh so the chunk loader is set to load a certain number of these chunks and that uh those lasers there are showing you the area that it's going to keep loaded but i need to have it load slightly more because it's not catching the end of the the building there so let's go back into the hole here plop and we're gonna right click and we're gonna increase the radius to three and that'll do it. That's one additional chunk wide. The That thing is now past the end of my base and it should work great. There are other situations where you have to have one of these as well. This, you're gonna end up using chunk loaders a lot in a, in a mod pack like this. And uh, so now those lasers are getting annoying. So let's hit hide to hide them. Now beware, the more chunks you load, that takes more and more memory. So don't just go crazy and set this to a huge number or you can run out of RAM on your computer or crash the server that you're playing on. Only load as many, the, load the smallest amount of chunks that you can uh, without, without going over. And another option is this spot loader. 
You can see if you take a chunk loader and surround it with ender pearls, you get 10 spot loaders. That's a way to load just a single chunk. Whatever chunk you plop that on the ground, it's gonna load just that chunk. So that, that can be useful too. Um, okay, so now this is gonna generate lava for us even when we're not here. And that's important since we're using this as fuel for, for the engines that we're gonna make. And uh, it's gonna use these ender tanks. So again, like I said, those ender tanks let us travel. So this is creating the lava for us. We need to teleport it back home again in order for it to be useful. So uh, that means we also need a chunk loader here in our main base or else, uh, you know, both sides has to be loaded at the same time and you can't be in two places at once. So I'm gonna grab another chunk loader here and I'm, I'm gonna stash this so it's hidden. We're gonna put it right underneath there. There we go. I might get annoyed and put that in a different place, but I can still use the elevator. So for now it's kind of hidden. And uh, let's, let's turn that on a bit and take a look. Basically I want the farms like the mob farms, squid farm. I want those to be loaded. And I want anything, yeah, I want the crops to be able to grow. And uh, I want any technology stuff that I'm doing to be loaded as well. And it looks like the radius that I just picked will do nicely. So let's leave it at five, hide the lasers again, and call that good. So now we just need a place on this side to be able to receive the lava. So basically this whole contraption that we made here, we don't need this anymore because we just made a much bigger one uh, over in the other world. Now, if you if you want, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a, a cobble generator because there, there still are, you know, cobble-based achievements to get, but uh, we don't need these crucibles here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear these out. And, uh, wait, let's see, let's do this carefully. Boom, boom. And we'll have much better cobble related uh, stuff later. But I've got, I've got this engine here. There we go. So we have this engine here that's filled with lava. We're going to let it get filled with lava from a new, from the new lava farm that we made. And to do that, we need to transfer the lava over here. So let me show you how to make an ender tank. Ender tank right here. So this is a cauldron, which is just iron, two obsidian, blaze rods, wool, and an ender pearl. If you don't know how to get any of those materials, you need to go back and watch previous episodes. All of those should be obtainable for you now. And so we're gonna take an ender tank Ender tank. And we're gonna, well, we don't need redstone underneath it. We're gonna put this right there. Boom, you see how that immediately filled up? So that's filled with lava from the lava farm over there. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's uh, get rid of that generator and make a new one, just so that it's empty, so that we have one that's empty and we can see. So right now there's no lava in here, right? And that's because this tank isn't by default emptying the lava anywhere. But if we see the little hitbox on that circle, if we spin that wheel, suddenly it will. So let's do that. Let's right click on the wheel. And now, boom. Now it's auto ejecting the liquid. Uh, it, it attempts to push the liquid into whatever is next to it. So tanks or pipes or whatever, and including this lava generator. So now this thing's never gonna run out because it's always gonna be filled with lava from our nether lava farm. And if we wanted to set this up so that we had more of them, we could do, or more engines, I mean, Back to the fluiduct right there, because that thing is really cheap to make. You can set them in a line like that, and I'm gonna put this one away. Boom, like that. Push, and then more lava generators, like so. And see how they're all filling up? 
We don't even need a redstone signal here because this is pushing it into the tank. If you wanted the pipe to pull it out of the tank, then we would need a redstone signal and we would have to wrench that. But this thing is, is pushing it out itself and it's going through and filling all these up. And just like that, we have a, a much larger amount of power and we could take this, um, this pipe here extended along and now we can start making machines and just line them up in front of the conduit and all of them will have power and so that's all stuff for another video but i highly recommend making a room for this sort of stuff make a room just for your engines and your power and and be prepared to pipe the power from there off to wherever the machines are it's good to have a machine room and a power room separately. And of course our fuel room is, is off in the nether. And uh, so next time when we come back, I'll have something like that set up. And now that we've got our power situation taken care of, we're gonna be able to get much deeper into the tech and complete some of these cooler achievements. So that's it for now. Thank you everybody for watching. If you like this video at all, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Be sure to check me out on Twitch, broadcasting Minecraft almost daily, twitch.tv slash bacon underscore donut. And of course, follow me on Twitter as well. You guys are awesome. See ya, bye.